Hello students, in this session we are going to discuss about uh, construction of phylogenetic tree and analysis of those phylogenetic uh, tree using mega software. So before going to the actual syllabi, we need to discuss about uh, what is phylogenetic tree. So you know that in your PG as well as in PUC or in UG, you, you know about in detail I, I know regarding phylogenetic tree. So, phylogenetic tree is the diagrammatic representation of uh, the relation between the species or group of organisms. So, the data which is driven uh, to construct the uh, phylogenetic tree is based on the phenotypic characteristics or by DNA uh, similarities and dissimilarities or by protein uh, similarities or dissimilarities or biochemical similarities or dissimilarities like that you know uh, they will construct phylogenetic tree. So uh, before uh, the discovery of DNA inheritance you know uh, the Charles Darwin and uh, uh, many other people uh, they worked on uh, the, uh, you know in represent you know they will they, they worked on in construction of phylogenetic tree based on the phenotypic right and in that you know many errors happen take example here bats because of phenotypic trad, they categorized into the apes, birds family. That is wrong because that is mammal, right? And including, you know, uh, uh, the dolphins. Dolphins also categorized into fishes, but it is also mammal, right? So, like that, some, uh, you know, mistakes will happen when, when you go for phenotypic trad. But now, you know, by DNA, or protein analysis, we can easily construct and correlate, and um, we can easily, you know, segregate uh, and uh, we can correlate the species so that which one is near, which one is far away, like that. You can I can observe that this is the typical phylogenetic tree. You can see. So this is uh, uh, the complete vertebrate uh, uh, phylogenetic tree. This is the common ancestor for the, these species as well as lamprey. And uh, this is jawed uh, vertebrate where uh, uh, sunfish is categorized, segregated, and then this uh, new phyla is uh, formed. And again, uh, tetrapod ancestors are categorized where the new is sep separated, and then uh, this is uh, separately formed, and this becomes common ancestor for these three species. Again, you know, amniot uh, ancestors are there where you can see lizards are segregated and. Uh, this is nuclear form, and then you can observe that egg laying mammals are uh, not egg laying, sorry, it is a, this is called platypus, where it is the, uh, the amphibian between uh, these two species, these two, uh, you know, phylum, where um, it becomes called, you know, it, platypus will be appears here, and then later on, uh, you know, uh, new, you know, uh, mammals, they, you know, they have given birth for uh, the younger ones, and then, you know, no eggling happens here, and uh, these uh, called as mammals. Then they, you know, they will give birth for younger ones as well as uh, they will feed the milk to mammary gland. Uh, because of that, they call as mammals. Like that, the segregation uh, will uh, uh, appear based on the phenotypic as well as genotypic characters. So we'll go by one by one, and uh, the construction of phylogenetic tree will strictly follows uh, the international code for phylogenetic. Uh, Construction nomenclature that is called phylo code. So this phylo code is strictly uh, utilized in all softwares as well as in physical uh, type of constructions. Without that, definitely we should not uh, go with the taxa taxonomical categorization. So this is the typical type of uh, phylogenetic tree. You can observe that this is the common original common ancestor. From that, different species are emerges out, and this is the first uh, you know branch that appears. Where you can observe that this is plant. So sorry, uh, you know, this is euca eukaryotic organism. In that you can observe that it becomes plant, and this becomes animals here. And plants because of symbiotic association with uh, aerobic bacterium that becomes mitochondria, and uh, uh, in photosynthetic bacteria that becomes chloroplast. Uh, it becomes autotroph. But uh, animal, uh, you know. Uh, uh, precursor uh, animal, uh, so uh, the, the animal uh, type of cells only symbiotically associated with mitochondria, and uh, because of that, they become heterotrophs. Like that, the category will happen in animals. You know, uh, different different categories there. 
like vertebrates invertebrates egg laying uh, you know uh, egg laying uh, vertebrates and then uh, uh, mam mammals etc and then this is called as node where you know new species are emerges out and uh, uh, segregate and contrast with the uh, common ancestor is called as node because of that new species will emerge out over the period of uh, time and the evolution and this is root is the common major distant common ancestor and uh, known uh, where you can observe that we can call uh, you know called as recent common ancestors right and then uh, these are called as clade where some uh, these are this uh, species which is existed in current situation current environmental condition where uh, they will have contrasting phenotypic traits and among those species uh, you know you can observe that among those clades some clades will have uh, more similarities that is called as a recent common uh, recent common group and they categorized into monophyletic monophyletic we'll do, we're going to discuss about that in uh, further slides and some species are uh, contrasting you can observe that here man gorilla will have uh, common features both are bipedal and both have common intelligence and then look uh, similar and this is called monophyletic and then but uh, this is called as plant you can see there is so much contrast between man and a uh, plant here this comes and comes under paraphyletic and some groups are there you can see man and uh, donkey is there even though they categorized into mammals uh, man is bip uh, bipedal donkey is polypedal and different different uh, phenotypic features are there they comes under poly This is the these are the category of this uh, you know uh, the phylogenetic tree where you can observe that the distant common ancestor called as root from that different species are emerges from this this is maybe a, a ancestral species or uh, it may be paleontological uh, uh, you know uh, species which is not existed but we can compare that by DNA analysis and then this is different clade this is different uh, you know uh, clade this is no different node. And then at the end, we'll have clade where currently existing species are there. We we gonna compare among those species and categorize them. And uh, based on the presence and absence of common root, you can see it, it is categorized. Phylogenetic tree is categorized into rooted, where we'll find common ancestors, uh, which is uh, previously pre-existed uh, common ancestors. Some are unrooted, where we cannot find any common ancestors for that. Uh, that is called unrooted, where uh, one more uh, category is called bifurcating uh, type of uh, trees are there, where uh, you can observe that uh, 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 two different branches are there, that is, uh, that will have contrasting type of phenotypic traits. And multifurcating trees are there, where you can observe that they will have different, different contrasting uh, phenotypic traits are there, some uh, different, uh, different proteins are there. Or different DNA pattern is there that is called multi -fercating. You can see here this is rooted where that is emerges from the common ancestor. This is unrooted where there is no common ancestor. There is no common ancestors here. And this is bifurcating where it is divided into two different groups. And this is multi We you know they will have uh, different different uh, multiple branches here. That is based on the presence and absence of common root or ancestor. But one more category of uh, phylogenetic tree is there. Uh, this is based on the topology. That means based on the situation they will you uh, that will be used. One is called as cladogram. One is called as phylogram. Uh, other one is called as, third one is called as dendrogram. And then uh, fourth one is called as chronogram or ultrametric tree. And uh, fifth one is called as delgrinogram. And uh, uh, sixth one is called as network phylogeny tree. And seventh one is tensor tree. The eighth one is radial tree. And then ninth one is called as Ancestral reconstruction tree. That uh, that is different different types of phylogenetic tree. That based on the situation, whatever the parameters which is needed for uh, individual researcher, uh, they will go for different different types of uh, uh, topological phylogenetic tree. Uh, we'll go one by one. Cladogram that shares uh, uh, you know uh, 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 different uh, characteristics. So we, uh, that will uh, give cladogram gives evolution relation between the Different species that uh, that have different different characteristics, and uh, that will compare uh, with among the uh, you know between two different taxa. That is called cladogram. 
and then phylo phylogram is commonly used that is similar to that of uh, cladogram that mainly gives out the the uh, proportion of mutation evolution that happens over the period of uh, you know evolutionary time that means the amount of uh, the a, a, uh, interference interference either mutations aberration or uh, mutations and uh, nonsense mutations chromosomal aberrations or uh, useful mutations etc that happens over period of uh, time during evolution that is called as phylog phylogram and uh, one more type of uh, phylogenetic tree is called chronogram that uh, gives a scale or rate of evolution that means you know some chronogram contains scale so that will give uh, the number of mutations number of uh, the changes or uh, phenotypic changes or genotypic changes are protein evolution happened over the pure uh, period of evolution across the lineage that is called chronogram next one is dendrogram you know whatever the representation is there that is contrasting in dendrogram that represented like here like creature uh, you know whatever you can see this uh, cladogram everything will be represented like this right but in dendrogram is represented like this uh, like this okay like that some phylogenetic tree is constructed so this is different uh, that will give relationship uh, ship between uh, different species and the application of dendrogram in uh, you know that will be ap applicable in case of uh, the you know uh, uh, categorization of uh, a taxon group etc and uh, you know dendrogram uh, you can observe that so this uh, dendrogram is a three dimensional diagram we can see here so this is the phylogenetic tree right? right you know this is i uh, will go with the example this is the phylogenetic tree right? so uh, it will uh, it will be represented in one dimensional structure but in the dental green of gram we can observe that it is represented like this this is a three dimensional structure where this is represented like a bubble right it is re represented like a bubble and then uh, you know uh, it will give us a three dimensional picture regarding the uh, you know similarities and dissimilar things between the clades that is called dendrogram the uh, dendrogram so you can observe that i will give uh, with pictures here there is cross section of the top portion of the clade of phylogenetic tree and network phylogenetic tree is there that is uh, you know uh, you know uh, so it, that will be applicable only for some species like bacteria where uh, you know due to horizontal gene transfer you know they got some resistance genes and that everything that is evolutionary pattern of the bacteria primitive organism that, that is applicable where a vast number of species is uh, available so that we can compare it with network phylogenetic tree next the next one is con uh, consensus type of phylogenetic tree that is uh, the com uh, in a combination of multiple phylogenetic tree so that, uh, that they will have uh, they will evaluate uh, the evolutionary relationship next one is radial tree where you can observe that uh, you know you can see the by this tree we cannot represent and uh, you know give relation between them then uh, we can represent that in circular way this phylogenetic tree is represented in circular way like this that is called as a radial tree so you can see instead of uh, constructing like this we can give that uh, in radial picture and uh, it, it will be give a better understanding of the relation between uh, uh, different different species and then the uh, last one is called ancestral reconstruction tree where we don't know about the uh, common ancestor distant common ancestor uh, which is tree existed which is not available now so we can easily find out those kind of ancestral ancestral species by ancestral reconstruction tree where you know uh, by evaluating the current species we will find we will go back we will dig back the grave of the pre existing species which is the common ancestor for the currently available species we will go uh, with one by one here this is chronogram you can see that will represent uh, the scale here you know uh, uniformly that will be, uh, that is represented and this is phylogram and you can see this distance between that that will give the the number of substitutions that is happened and uh, the evolution change that happened due to mutation aberration etc and this is cladogram same as as that of the chronogram and if you go by dendrogram you can see whatever representation is there so that is represented inverted like this okay this is called as dendrogram and then that will have different parameters here 
And if you go for uh, Dehlev Green, uh, you know, Dehlev Greenogram, you can observe that. So this is the phylogenetic tree, but you can see the clades are represented in the bubble like this. You can see here, this is the three-dimensional representation of phylogenetic tree, you know, by constructing only clades here. So we don't know the, you know, we will not represent that, that common recent ancestor, but we will discuss about the currently available species, which is displayed, uh, you know, in the clade here. And this is network type of phylogenetic tree where you can observe that different type of uh, simple phylogenetic tree is correlated like a network here. You can see, uh, you know, this is uh, different uh, uh, species. This is categorized based on the beak shape and the beak size, right? You can see this is the common available species in uh, uh, some island where you can observe that some are sharp beacon, uh, some are blunted, some are tree finches. And uh, you can see these finches are common in, uh, uh, you know, Darwin theory, right? In uh, the island, Galapago Island, these finches are, uh, you know, different species of finches is available. We can construct and, uh, uh, you know, we can uh, represent that relation by constructing network phylogenetic tree. And then uh, consensus phylogenetic tree, where we can observe that, we can give a different uh, uh, varieties of relations here with respect to different, different species here. You can see A, B, C, D, uh, you know, this is the clades here, you know, we can represent it in different, uh, where, you know, ways, you know, strictly, con you know, that is categorized into strictly consens uh, consensual trees, 50% uh, majority consens uh, consensual trees that will be, that will be uh, you know, uh, different types of construction that is mainly applicable for research purposes. And radial phylogenetic tree, you can see here, this type of uh, things, uh, you know, normal type of uh, representation of phylogenetic tree will be represented uh, beautifully uh, like this in a radial manner where you can see we can represent uh, these clades as well as branches in dot circles here. So that will give, the, this is the common ancestor and uh, from that, you know, this evolution started here. So it, it will represent it in a beautiful way in radial fashion. So we can easily give out the uh, the uh, relation between these species here. And last one is for us ancestral reconstruction tree where we, we don't know about the ancestors based on the phenotypic parameters or genotypic parameters and then other type of uh, parameters will dig back the grave of the uh, the common ancestor which is pre existed. This is the uh, topological type of population tree. And uh, later we're going to discuss about uh, the the uh, you know while after construction of phylogenetic tree, how you represent those trees? In that you can see if you got this kind of tree, this two one uh, three, you know two is called as clade. These two clades considered as monophyletic groups. Monophyletic groups are the species which has uh, you know around eighty percent similarities, and then whatever genotypically and phenotypically they have ninety percent similarities, they categorize into single uh, clade, and they have recent common ancestors and next one is called polyphyletic this is uh, the contrasting thing with monophyletic where you can observe that so here d and e considered as monophyletic and g and h considered as monophyletic because they evolved from recent common ancestors but for e and g they consider as polyphyletic uh, but they don't have recent common ancestors but they have distance common ancestors. The phenotypic traits and genotypic uh, traits will have around 50-50 similarity is not 90% uh, similarity, 80% similarity is not there. So you can observe that similarity is nearly around 50%. And uh, the last group, uh, the last category of phylogenetic tree is called as paraphyletic. Para means different. You can observe that D and JK is considered as paraphyletic. You can see this is animal. Uh, there is this human being and this is a plant. This plant nowhere related to human beings because human beings, you know, uh, you know, uh, ribosome, uh, ribo even though ribosomes are similar, you can observe that it contains mitochondria, it contains uh, uh, mitochondria and chloroplast, it, it contains uh, different uh, types of uh, uh, phenotypic features. Plant is autotrophic and then uh, non locomotive, humans are locomotive, motile. So different, uh, you know, there is lesser similarities are there. 
uh, more of contrasting things are there. They comes under Sara Parikya group. In exam, you know, if uh, in a uh, in a practical examination or a theory examination, if they give a phylogenetic degree, we to categorize them into monophyletic, polyphyletic, and paraphyletic, so that it will get the mark uh, at the end of that. So uh, to construct the phylogenetic degree, uh, we'll use different different softwares. In that, uh, the mega software that is called molecular evolutionary genetic analysis software is the reliable software which may, may you know it is a computational software which is used commonly uh, for construction of phylogenetic tree that will use a, a statistical algorithm uh, that will give a uh, you know a relation between uh, the two different species so you can observe that if you go to the software directly definitely you'll get the well, you can get the software and then you can download it and then you can construct the phylogenetic tree and uh, how you will construct the phylogenetic tree through mega software uh, we will go by one by one the steps in my you know uh, that will that will be you know followed in ph phylogenetic tree construction by using mega software first you will go and select the molecular markers first step is you will select the molecular markers either you will download the dna a dna nucleotide sample or a nucleotide sample or protein sample of something that take example like i will select polymerase polymerase protein and they will i will go what sequence i will go with protein i you know protein is very uh, commonly you know uh, downloaded and online uh, to go for uh, phylogenetic tree construction and dna you will get uh, you know some errors here because of uh, it contains different different sequences that is not uh, you know uh, not necessary for construction of phylogenetic tree so protein the database is most most reliable and after selecting the dna sequence you need to align that in different formats okay so you can see you can align that in fasta format export that sequence in fasta format and there are different different ways is there to align that sequence i will uh, teach you one by one and then uh, you will do multiple sequence alignment after uh, you know uh, convert that uh, sequence in fasta format you will go and arrange them in multiple sequence arrangement. I know uh, alignment. Why multiple sequence alignment is necessary? Why? Because you can observe that as a doctor, you can see if uh, a cut a dead body is given, you will align arrange them as head and uh, body part as well as leg, right? So like that, multiple sequence alignment arrange them into different different sequence parent uh, patterns so that it will be arranged in a sequential base. Sequential base space here. And then, and after uh, you know multiple sequence arrangement, you know we'll inspect the alignment whether some gaps are there, unwanted sequence, unaligned sequences are there. We need to remove that. We need to trim trim those uh, non-aligned sequences. And then we'll save the alignment in different different format. You can save it in pasta format. You'll save save it in mega format. Uh, both are okay. So in uh, online phylogenetic tree like in if you directly go with cluster w uh, uh cluster omega type of online uh type of uh you know um, website you will directly save that in faster format but you can save it in mega for mega format in case of uh you know or if you are handling mega uh, software and then uh you will go on to select the phylogenetic uh, uh you know or Tree and then you will go with model. Different different models are there. I know, uh, uh, you know, different models are there. In that, uh, whatever preferable for your data construction, your phylogenetic data construction, you need to select the model. And then you need to construct phylogenetic tree. And then lastly, you need to assess the reliability of the tree based on the bootstrap method. Next thing is how to download mega software you know different different mega things are there you have to click mega bioinformatics otherwise you will that will go to different websites where some other applications are there that is nowhere related to bioinformatics so if you click uh, you know mega bioinformatics it will open up like this you can see here uh, you know mega software is there that is related to bioinformatics it will open molecular evolutionary genetic analysis where you can see here you can download it for Windows, you can download it for Apple Mac OS, you can download it for Ubuntu and other type of Linux software. 
you can observe that if it is you know uh, if your uh, system is 64 bit you can download 64 bit and 32 bit and click download and if you download it it will you know uh, it, it will ask you know if you click download it will open up into a different website where you need to give information regarding you need to you know accept uh, the uh, whatever uh, terms and conditions here and after that you know it will give uh, a website uh, to download that you can see uh, you know it will give uh, you know some parameters whether you are downloading from a uh, country where you are uh, you know in which institution you are working are you a researcher or student like this you will give that uh, you know click that uh, respective type of uh, you know text and then download it and then it will open up after uh, you know after downloading that you need to install the software and then you know it will take a while and then it will install mega software okay then we will go with mega software and then construct final synthetic tree In the final synthetic tree construction through mega software you need to create a folder like this follow final genetic tree construction open a notepad here or a text document here and rename that with your protein interest you know i am kind you know i am renaming that with serine compile right you need to do that compile file and then you need to open that file okay after that i will search i will search uh, you know i will go with nc bi and then search the protein i will go with uh, in, you know i will go to the nc bi website and i will search regarding search regarding the protein database of you can see here you will select here protein database of serine serine c1 protein okay I am select and going and uh, you know doing that serine C1 protein. I am searching different different organism here. You can see here, you can see different different uh, uh, you know uh, organism. You can see serine C1 protein. I am searching that where different different organism protein database of organisms will appear here, right? You can see here different different organism will appear here. I will go with uh, downloading one by one. Here you can see I am uh, right clicking that and uh, opening in new tab and it will open in new tab and then you can see after that you know you will click the FASTA format and then you can observe that uh, this is the protein sequence. You can see if ATGC is there that is DNA sequence. This is protein sequence and then click a button called as send to and then file you can see you can download that in FASTA format you can see you know the file will be downloaded you can see open that sequence you can see i will open that sequence so i will open that that sequence in notepad you can see open with notepad and then whatever data is there i will copy it copy it and then whatever uh, the notepad we compile you can see serine compiled file is there i am pasting that and then retaining that organism whatever you know you can see beak feather disease virus so retaining that name everything will be deleted you can see we'll retain the greater than symbol and then we'll only retain the virus which is infected again go and enter and you'll go with one more enter and then go with other other organism here i know serine c1 with uh, big feather uh, disease i will go with uh, you know uh, vitreo cilia uh, cilia species and you'll uh, go with bacteria if you want some bacterial species e coli i will click e coli and then i'm downloading the serine c1 protein for e coli sequence you can see uh, some E. coli protein is there. I am uh, selecting that, and then like that, you need to download and uh, you know download the all the species here. If you download that, you can see pasta. Like that, you need to download and uh, you know you can uh, send that and file and pasta format. And again, you you know you need to open that sequence. Open that sequence in Notepad. You can see open that in Notepad, and then again 
copying that species, copying the name, and then I am closing that uh, file and then again pasting that in uh, the serine compile file and then uh, retain the greater than symbol and then the E. coli is there, right? Retain the E. coli name and then you can see in delete the all the other names and then retain the sequence here, protein sequence. Like that, you need to compile all the files here and save that. If you compile the file, you can see I will go to the file, phylogenetic folder. You can see. So, you can see if you go, go to the phylogenetic folder, I compile serine C1 for Homo sapien, mus musculus for rat, uh, you know, uh, mouse, and then uh, dog here, and then other, uh, in, you know, Elaphus species, Equus asianus, like the different species are uh, downloaded and compiled in Notepad here. You can see that is there in FASA format and you need to remember you need to retain greater than symbol without any gap you need to retain the scientific name and then you need to have sequence and then you need to give one space gap and then again greater than symbol scientific name and sequence like that you need to compile all the file and save that file save that file and go with mega software okay i am going with mega software now i can see and uh, in mega software I know I am going with mega software here. First, you need to select the alignment and then click uh, the button called edit and build alignment. And after that, you know, it will show the, uh, the options here. You know, uh, the first option is create new alignment or open unsaved alignment and retrieve sequence from the file. So, here we are compiled new files here, we are uh, creating new alignment here. Okay. So, uh, whatever the sequence we collected that is from the protein, we are selecting option called protein. After that, a new tab will open and then you have to delete the sequence. You can see if you delete the sequence, you know, that will interfere. And then for you know to get that sequence, whatever we compile, compile, you know, just go with edit and then click the button called as insert sequence from the file. Whatever file we selected, we will directly go with the file. Uh, so here phylogenetic tree in that phylo is there in there you know this is the phylogeny of serine text file we compile and opening that if you open that file so it will open the, all the species and then you can see we will select a that means control a if you select that and then go with the option called as alignment in that you know th there is two options are there align by cluster w align by muzzle both options are favorable but you know Cluster W is most most favorable. You can see if you align um, the multiple sequence alignment by cluster W, that will give us you know a good data here. You know I am aligning aligning that by a cluster W and I am clicking OK here. So it will take a while and then it will arrange this a sequence in in a, in a fashion here. You can see a different different color is represent, represented. You can see yes yes is there in all the things. That means the sequence is not changed and uh, you can some change uh, sequence are changed over the period of time you can see y is changed to g and h because of you know the transition transformation of the dna or entire basement and what are the dot dots here dot means are there, you know dash dashes are there that is missing sequences missing sequences are there you know the hound of uh, you know the scientists who compiled on the sequence these uh, whatever things are there so they missed out the sequences, right? This dot dot is represented miss uh, missed base pairs or miss sequences or in case of proteins, this is missed uh, you know uh, protein sequences or codon. Okay, this is the compiled alignment. I know my cluster W multiple sequence aligned file, and after alignment, we need to go for data and then you need to explore this data. So you know if you are operating with mega format i know by using software mega software you need to export that in mega format so if you are going with online software where you are uh, you know do, uh, doing cluster omega type of online uh, type of website you need to go with fasta format now we know i am operating with mega software i am saving that you know in a mega format so which for you know which folder which folder I know in desktop only I will save because you know to you know uh, to reduce the confusion you can see you know I am saving that uh, you know uh, name called as serine serine c1 uh, you know c1 
in desktop only and i am saving that otherwise i will directly go with the folder where uh, you know um, uh, phylogenetic tree is constructed in that you can see uh, phylogenetic tree is there i will save here in, in a serine c1 mega format i am saving that and again same name you, you should be given serine c1 in input file and ok after that you need to close this tab and then i need to go with one more uh, you know thing called as phylogenetic reconstruction after alignment you can see you need to close that sequence and then you need to go with phylogeny and then you need to select a uh, construct uh, you know a test maximum likely likely different different options are there with respect to phylogenetic tree one was plus uh, test neighbor joining tree test minimum ev evolution tree you know up gme trees are there test maximum uh, paris uh, pari uh, parisimony trees are there so in that uh, you know we'll generally generally as a beginner we need to go with uh, maximum likely tree in that you know whatever the file we saved in uh, phylogeny folder let to select that serine c1 which is saved in mega format we'll we need to open that and then we need to select the bootstrap method to test the phylogeny and then number of bootstrap replica you can select it like you know we'll minimum we'll uh, put it 100 here we can go for i know or 5 or 500 also and then we need to select the option called bootstrap method what is bootstrap uh, method we'll you know we'll uh, you know explain that uh, later you can see we will uh, click ok because all the other parameters are default and uh, if you select that and then it will take a while right it will take a while and process and uh, gives the phylogenetic tree at the end of that so it will take a while it will take uh, some time and then it will progress and gives phylogenetic tree here. See here after that you know it will open new tab here and then you can observe that if you expand that so it will give original tree and bootstrap census here and different different parameters are there you can see uh, we will change you can see one by one here and uh, you can see if you change the length change the tree height you can see it will give uh, the you know tree like this different different options are there you can see I can go with a traditional tree where you can say straight, uh, you know, trees can be constructed, you can say like this, or you will go with, uh, you know, uh, rectangular trees where this is commonly used for the purpose of phylogenetic tree construction. You can see this is uh, the things where you can observe that uh, we will have all the parameters, and you can see this is the construction here. And this is the first option called as layout, we can change the tree width and then tree height and uh, different uh, auto size drag and uh, resize can be done and then second option is subtree you know if we have subtrees you know we can change uh, the uh, subtree and then star six and frequency uh, so you can see we can change the horizontal vertical lines here and you can change the distance scale also you can see uh, we can change the distance scales here instead of 0 0.2 we can go and change 0 0.5 also like that what you know what is this scale indicates in original tree is number of uh, you know uh, the value uh, that means number of uh, the mutations or transitions happened that means 0 0.20 that means uh, the uh, 20 uh, the transition transversions base pair transitions happened for 100 base pairs of dna if it is dna sequence it will calculate like you know 20 transitions that is happened uh, in evolution tree with 100 base pairs of DNA, but in case of proteins, you know that is different thing. So this is the scale of things where you can see this this much of distance, but that will gives the number of uh, the uh, protein changes among the sequence of this, uh, you know, uh, the sequence of the proteins, protein sequences of different different organisms here. And you can observe that in bootstrap sensors, you can see different scale is there with different different distances. That mainly indicates that this distance mainly gives out a number of you know evolutionary distance of uh, the base pair or protein changes. That means 20 protein change 
400 100 uh, you know codon of uh, the organism like that the distance scale can be varies and in uh, di different different uh, types of uh, phylogenetry that is called as evolutionary scale number of mutation scale number of sequence uh, you know transition scales like this the parameter will changes uh, for dna protein or different different things here and ancestral uh, parameters are there and different different parameters are there. and then you need to if you want to save the tree you can say bootstrap tree will be given this value uh, you know this is original tree and this is boot bootstrap uh, census where you can see the maximum number will gives uh, the higher uh, you know likely value that means if uh, the value is uh, above 90 or above 70 that means whatever the parameters which we are giving that will give a positive re relation uh, you know positive results with rela with related to these two organisms that means this is 90 98 will give good bootstrap value less than 70 this is uh, 62 that is poor bootstrap value for this uh, you know this uh, type of phylogenetic degree if we got 62 definitely that is poor the you know poor type of bootstrap value uh, and if you want to save this uh, uh, you know uh, tree for uh, uh, you know uh, for uh, image purpose you can see if you click image and then uh, you can uh, transport that in pdf format or png format you can see if you click png it will open new tab and select the folder and then you can observe that in phylogenetic tree we'll name rename it as sirin sirin and then uh, say okay and then it and then okay so it will open you know if you go to the folder you can see here in phylogenetic tree uh, the sirin will be open like this this is the phylogenetic tree we, which we constructed like this you can see like that it will be saved and then uh, you know we'll go with the parameters here and this is the tree we got after uh, phylogenetic tree construction so after saving uh, the image uh, phylogenetic tree in uh, 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 p image format you can see this is the tree we got and then evaluation of those trees can be done by bootstrap value right it is also called as confidence where we can observe that if more bootstrap value is there that will strongly support the uh, relation between two organisms if you if you got lesser value definitely that will negatively weakly support the likelihood of two organisms in the clade here so this is uh, you know a bootstrap value it's a statistical measure to measure the confidence so that will gives the that supports the relation between two organisms you can see mouse and rat is so much uh, correlated that is comes under monophyletic group so that is there that is true and then so the homo sapiens should be nearer to this but thing is because of lesser value you can observe that this is neglected why because this value is very poor as you know in uh, you know boots value it got 60 because of uh, poor uh, you know uh, the segments this is aligned here for uh, homo sapiens that should be there near to homo sapiens because mouse genome and rat gene you know human genome is so much so correlated higher boots value will often uh, consider as the strong support for the uh, spe you know specific branching pattern with respect to two different clades here so this is uh, you know good give you know gives you know higher value will gives good relation and lower will gives weakly supported weak relation between that and then we can observe that uh, you know we will measure the scale here whatever scales are there so uh, the, uh, the scale is measured like the 0 0.02 is given scale here the scale mainly gives out the measure of sequence divergence that means how much these species are diverse you can see here you can compare cucurbita the distance between these two this clade is far away so this clade to this distance is far away so that will give longer distance between cucurbita with this species and these species too right so this is so much diversified and separated into polyphyletic as compared to this species here this comes under monophyletic this comes under monophyletic and this comes under para uh, you know uh, polyphyletic this is called as para different right and then you can observe that you know uh, 0.02 mainly gives out in in case of dna two base pair differences for 100 base pairs 
But in case of this, this is protein sequence that gives uh, that gives the parameter called as genetic distance among those species which is measured in 0 0.2, uh, you know, distance here. That means, you know, 0 0.02 0 .2 mainly indicates the, uh, the difference of the sequence or difference of the codon between two different organisms here. This is the horizontal measure here. Longer the distance, the higher the uh, sequence divergence. It may be codon divergent. In case of DNA, sequence divergence is there. Like that, you can measure the uh, phylogenetic degree by bootstrap method. So, instead of arranging the sequence in FASTA format in a word file or text document, that becomes laborious, right? Uh, instead of that, there is alternative is there. You can observe that. You can also go and align the sequence through web format. You can see, go to NCBI and uh, here you can get a search the protein. And then if you search that, you will get accession number for different different organisms here. And directly go with that and then click web here and then go to query gen bank. And here, so it will open a new tab NCBR in within uh, mega. You can see and search it. So it will take a while. You can see. You will search it. See here, it will directly go to the sequence here and then you can directly click a button called as add alignment. So, in mega itself, it, it, it will import uh, the alignment and then click OK here and you can rename that with first word you can see the virus and then uh, the accession number and OK. So, that will add up in the, uh, the uh, protein sequence here. You can directly go on uh, web, web query gen bank. And once again, you need to go select one more uh, accession number here, right? So, I will go with uh, different organism here and select the accession number here and then again go with mega, again paste it and then search it. If you search once again, you can see it will go to the protein and then again here FASTA format is available. Do not click FASTA, just go to add alignment. So, it will just uh, you know import full sequence and click OK. So, in first word select uh, organism, second word you select the accession number and OK. Again, you can see alignment happened. Like that you can do that in shortcut way if you are, if you become expert in uh, the phylogenetic read uh, construction through MIGA software. So, instead of compiling all the files in text document, it, you know there is alternative is there. You can go to web and then compile the sequence here and then go with alignment by cluster W. Like that, different ways there to make the sequence here, to align the sequence and then go for multiple sequence alignment.